Welcome to Virtual Worship with Northley United. Our mission at Northley is to love God, nurture the Spirit, connect with others, and serve the world. Thank you for joining us in worship. To learn more about us, visit our website at northleyunited.ca. Good morning. As we begin this time of worship together, we acknowledge that we are worshiping on the ancestral land of many First Nations peoples. We live, work, play, and pray on Treaty 13 lands. May we live in harmony and respect with all those who share this earth with us and be thankful to God as we move into a peaceful and healthy future together. Good morning and happy Easter. So glad that you've joined us through our virtual worship Easter service today. Any announcements, I commend to you through our News Bites weekly email newsletter or our website, northleyunited.ca. All the activities and things that are going on in the church can be found in our calendar there, and I commend them to you. I want to begin with a scripture sentence from Psalm 118, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy endures forever. And I invite you to follow along with our call to worship. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We gather today to shout, Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Out of the doom of death and despair, victory comes. Glory appears. We gather today to shout, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We shall live, witness, and recount the deeds of the God whose love endures forever. We gather today to shout, Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Let us sing together. Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh. 
This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ was raised gloriously from the dead, crushing the power of sin and destroying the sting of death. Throughout the world, Christians celebrate the mighty power of God as Christ calls us out of darkness to share in his marvelous light. May we and all Christ's people shine as lights in the world to the glory of God. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the opening prayer. Redeeming God, raise us up in Christ with the power of your Holy Spirit so that others may be awakened through our lives. Call us to step out of the tombs that consume us and more intentionally into the fullness of life that abounds in your presence. In our prayers and hymns and in our silence, let us acknowledge the ways we have been separated from the richness of who you have called us to be. Inspire our preaching and proclaiming the good news, news of healing, peace, justice, and community for all people. We know that you can bring us back to life, O God, that you will meet us in the shadows and remind us that there are no limits to this life. With the fresh breath of the Holy Spirit, we are revived. Alleluia and amen. This morning reading is from John 24, verses 1 to 12. O risen Christ, open us to the power of your resurrection as we hear it proclaimed anew this day that we too might rise to new life in you. Amen. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them, who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. In this reading, we hear God's voice. The Spirit is still speaking. Thanks be to God. And now we pray that the Holy Spirit be upon these words and enlivening in our hearts the wisdom we most need to hear at this time. Amen. As you were listening to the scripture this morning, did you notice that there is no resurrection in today's reading? It's Easter morning, and there's no resurrection. All we're left with is an, a story of nonsense, a, a hopeful nonsense, as it says in the version that we heard today. In the New Revised Standard Version, it says, an idle tale. In Luke's Gospel, there is only an empty tomb and a promise of resurrection. It hasn't happened yet. At least they haven't seen Jesus resurrected yet. So the women and Peter are left still grieving from the death of their beloved teacher and friend. They're left wondering, waiting, confused and bewildered. You know, I somehow think that this really, this reading really matches where we are this Easter. 
in our context. We are grieving, wondering, waiting. We're trying to make sense of how even with all our human progress, there is still death and destruction in the world. There is still hunger, poverty, racism, economic injustice, violence, war, a climate crisis, and this relentless pandemic. It feels like the empire has won, killed our joy, and stolen our hope in humanity. And where is God in all this? Where is the resurrected Jesus? Have you ever had a loved one who is bereft and suffering? And you know that pain and that distress is really temporary. You know that things will get better with time. But you telling them that doesn't make things better for them. Not in that moment because they are in the midst of anguish. Your reassurance sounds like hopeful nonsense. As many of you know, my daughter and son-in-law are new parents. They are in that stage where suddenly they have this huge responsibility to care for this tiny little human person who is so vulnerable and dependent who can only communicate with her silence and her shrill little cries. They are feeding every three hours, burping, changing, trying to find a stretch of sleep that will allow them to feel normal again. But normal for them is never going to be the same. There will be a new normal. This stage will pass, and they will be able to have a longer stretch of sleep again at some point. Healing will happen for my daughter, and the pain and discomfort will ease eventually. We all know this. But right now, the promise of life being better is impossible to imagine. At the moment, it feels like hopeful nonsense. It is impossible for us to see the potential in situations when we are hurting and in pain. I've shared the story of my journey with chronic pain. Those were dark days. Dark and lonely and frightening. There were so many attempts to fix the pain. I tried everything, and people would tell me, it will go away, it will get better. But each attempt at a new strategy left me feeling empty and still in pain. All I could do was surrender to it, to just be with it, wondering, waiting, praying. Faith in God's creative healing power gave me tremendous strength, as did the support of loving family and community. You know, the strange thing, the wonderful thing about the Christian narrative is that our primary spiritual practice is learning to die. Stay with me here. We learn over and over, to accept death and to let go so that new life can emerge. We practice dying with Jesus so that we and the whole of creation can live more fully. Have you ever considered it that way? We do this cycle of life and death and resurrection to be reminded that new life is possible in and through death. Now, death can happen in many ways. Death of a loved one, death of a lifestyle, death of a career, death of a relationship, death of a dream, death of a self-image, death of a belief or ideology. Learning to die makes it possible for us to have nonsensical hope. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not sure that it's as helpful to believe in the resurrection of Jesus as it is to trust in the inherent nature of God to bring about something new out of death. Resurrection, in this sense, is not about God being a fantastic magician, but about God being persistent with God's creative and transformative power. The resurrection is God's narrative. God doing God's thing in Jesus. 
What this means for us is to consider what God is doing in the midst of our deaths. What new life is emerging through our grief, our loss, and our emptiness. Peter, today, invites us to wonder, as he did, about what the return of Christ will look like in our lives, in our community. For Peter, none of what he expected to happen happened. Instead, he was invited to consider that there is more going on than he could possibly grasp or have any control over. He was a witness to God's life-changing, life-giving narrative, forcing his own narrative to die. Consider what happened with Peter thereafter. Peter waited and wondered, and eventually the risen Christ appeared to him. Interestingly or strangely, very different in appearance, but carrying the wounds of his crucifixion. Then at Pentecost, Peter preached to the gathered community, and the church was born. Today, Christ is revealed in our re-engagement with that narrative, our coming to the table for communion, in acts of kindness, compassion, and love. All this begs the question, as in Peter's case, what narratives do we cling to that need to die so that we can have new life? What story do we focus on that makes it hard for us to embrace the love of God? That power of Christ that can transform our lives, our relationships, our community. We tell ourselves stories all the time. There are narratives running in the background that drive our choices, our motivations, and our resistances. Do any of these sound familiar? I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. It's just too hard. It's impossible. They've taken too much from me. I'm not worthy. I don't have enough. I don't care anymore. It's not worth it. I've got nothing more to give. It mo won't make a difference anyway. I just can't do this anymore. These narratives are limiting, destructive, life-sucking narratives. They eat hope for breakfast, you might say. They need to die in order for a new story to emerge. In my daughter and son-in-law's situation, they are in the process of surrendering or letting die the idea of themselves as separate and independent. They are now a family. Their baby girl is currently in charge and any notion of control over their own lives is now permanently tempered by the needs of this child. In order for them to find peace with their changed circumstances, they're going to have to accept change, to surrender to the something greater that's going on, more than just them. The good news is that love will be their power source. God's love for them their love for their child, their love for each other, the love of their families. All of this will provide them with the strength and the courage they need to meet with and surmount the obstacles in front of them. It will allow them to find forgiveness in the times when they blow it. It will allow them to find comfort when they are at their wit's end, and it will bring them gratitude in those moments when they realized they survived it. And they survived what seemed like impossible circumstances. As life moves forward for them, they will joyfully share stories, shared stories of their foibles and their accomplishments. And one day, when they look back on these days, they will say, how did we ever get through that? And if I'm around, I'll say, God's loving grace was with you the whole time. God's 
loving grace is with us too, all the time, even in death, even when the tomb is empty. As an Easter people, the resurrection, the story is hopeful nonsense because it calls all of us to hope in what seems impossible. It reminds us that death does not mean the end of something. It doesn't just mean the end of something. It means the beginning of something new as well. Leaning into God's idle tale of resurrection reminds us of God's unlimited love that cannot be destroyed by death. Love that persists in the gift of Christ's death and resurrection. In these times where we as a human race are confronted with what feel like impossible challenges, let us put our trust completely in God's power to make all things new again. And may God's loving narrative, God's hopeful nonsense, guide us on our way. Amen.
Thank you for the many gifts that you share with your church and in the world, your time, your talent, and your treasure. For the wondrous ways our offerings will bless this community, help us nurture caring relationships with our neighbors, and do our part to liberate all who are experiencing oppression, we dedicate these gifts. May this offering and the works of our hands and our feet be the resurrection we need to see in the world. I invite you now to join me in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Loving Creator God, you who brought all things into being, who entered the world to experience our pain and our vulnerability, you who lived a love-driven life and demonstrated the indestructibility of your love through the resurrection of Christ, we open our hearts to you in these moments. We open our hearts with humility and gratitude. You know there are fears there and sorrows and regrets. You know that we carry worry and doubt. Help us to lean on you in our difficult times. Help us to trust in your limitless love and relentless life-giving nature. Guide us to embrace the mystery and wonder of your Easter story and let it nurture our faith and resilience on this journey of life we share. We pray for those who have lost their faith. We pray for those who cannot see the hope of Easter. May your grace find its way into their hearts and may too discover new life. And now together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us away from temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we end this time together, may we leave this place filled with Easter blessing. Impossible 
nonsensical hope. Take that into the world as you go now. And know that God is always with you. Jesus walks with us hand in hand. And the Spirit is moving and transforming all before us in any moment, all the time. Amen.